All right, so we're pulling up right now to the Convent Tattoo Studio. This is a notoriously haunted location. Someone saw a charred infant crawling across the floor. They have seven human skeletons. Serial killer artwork, thousands of haunted dolls. There it is, holy fuck. You hear a male talking to them. It's like he's standing right over you. You can feel him breathing. You can hear him breathe. A male voice, he he he, kind of mocking him. Like, okay, I'll show you what I can do. And he came down with a huge scratch across his stomach. The satanic smoky, they're too demonic for my taste. I cannot have them in my house. I just can't take it anymore. This is our Gacy corner, the infamous killer clown. I've got quite a few of his paintings. And this hoodie right here belongs to a mass killer. So well, People yeah. are getting tattooed. They actually are getting touched. Oh, Artists yeah. Are... The customers started to get a little freaked out because they would be touched, physically touched. All we want to do is speak with you tonight. Oh, this one, this one, this one. You're standing here. It seems like this place has come to life. Oh, the snap ball's going off. Okay, so you're one of the kids. We have heard the sound of opening the door, the ding ding. Is that something that just happens in here? Yeah, that, that doesn't go off unless the door's open. Oh. Not going on. No way. No way. Tonight we're in New Jersey at a haunted tattoo shop. This is one of the craziest locations we've ever been given access to investigate. I mean, just look behind me. These are four real human skeletons. And already there's something coming up from the basement to talk to us. Uh, the other owner had been scratched. He had been touched upstairs. Uh, most of the activity had, had definitely surrounded around our upper level, which is my library. This building houses hundreds of haunted artifacts, and there's no telling exactly who or what is haunting the building. The first time that I experienced anything here with Sophie, I was laying on her um, tattoo chair. Like, I just felt this gust, and you, you could feel it came from like upstairs and down the steps. In addition to human remains like these skeletons, serial killer artwork, and all other sorts of weird haunted relics, there's also a couple demon dolls to show right here, including this doll that was just dropped off here today. So join us tonight as we dive deep into the hauntings of this historic and very haunted tattoo parlor in New Jersey. I'm Colin, and you're watching The Paranormal Files. All right, so we're pulling up right now to the Convent Tattoo Studio. This is a notoriously haunted location here in Deptford, New Jersey. Place with a lot of stories, multiple deaths on the property, weird sightings, someone saw a charred infant crawling across the floor. And once we get in there, I think you're gonna find this interesting. They have seven human skeletons, full skeletons, and serial killer artwork, all sorts of macabre items, haunted dolls, thousands of haunted dolls. That's nuts. What do you think though? Are you excited? I'm excited. I think that, I mean, there's gonna be accumulation of like, a bunch of different kinds of spirits, different entities. Yeah, it's, a, it's kind of a place where you don't know who you're talking to. 
No. So many different things it could be. You're kind of throwing out a fishing line yeah. to the other side and seeing what you catch. Well, here we are, the convent. It's actually pretty big, dude, for a tattoo studio. I wonder what the actual history of this building is. You ready? I'm ready. I guess let's head on in. Let's we got it. a little surprise waiting for us in there too. Surprise for people online. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> All right, cut. Welcome to the convent, everybody. Uh, we are the haunted tattoo shop that many investigators have come through. It's never a dull moment. Um, the room that you're standing in right now is our waiting area. So many times you will hear somebody knock on the church pews that we have out here. You will also hear them sit down. You will hear them mess with the trash can. And somebody here likes to lock people out. <laughs> so we always have to take our keys with us when we walk out the door. This is also the room that you will hear a male voice a lot of the times. Um, if you're asking questions, he usually does answer many yes and no answers, so he's he's pretty intelligent. I'll start walking you guys through a little bit, kind of give you a little bit more history of the place. So the building that you're in right now was built in 1950. This was uh, the home of um, the same family for many, many years. The cool thing about this property is it's two buildings that are actually married together. So when we get through to the other part, you're gonna see that it's a huge open area. That building was brought over from another location close to this one, and the architect who had owned this property at the time wound up putting them both together. So it's a very unique building, especially the hauntings here, because it's a duly haunted location. So we have resident ghosts, we have spirits from all over, ones that we don't know, some that come and go. We have uh, a lot of visitors, so to speak. So the cool thing about this place is, at first, this part of the building did not have any activity, at least that we knew of whatsoever. It all stemmed from the other side of the building where it started on the upstairs and started to gradually flow over the years down in here. Now the entire property and the entire building is completely active. This is the hallway that a lot of people have seen who we believe is one of the gentlemen named Wilbert. He was young when he passed away. He was a farm boy. His family owned a lot of this property and this location. Uh, many customers have seen him physically walking and manifesting full body apparition. They always say it's a tall lanky guy with like a white shirt and blue jeans, the typical. But many people have actually thought that I had a customer in here and there's never been anybody here. Hmm. Um, and that's a confirmed death. Yeah, that's a con that's confirmed. That was one that was actually a confirmed death um, that, that another team was able to find out from historians that he apparently died here or maybe not in this location, but very close to it. This area too, we tend to get a lot of, I don't want to use the word portal because I really don't, you know, there are portals, but I've never really truly believed in them. But this area that we're going to get ready to walk through is more of a portal area. A lot of people have problems with their cell phones, their cameras, batteries dying constantly and very quickly. Um, a lot of bangs through here. We also have uh, one that I showed to you guys was the resident whistler who he loves this hallway. So I don't know if that is Wilbert himself whistling. I don't know if it's one of the kids or somebody else that is actually part of this property. You know, we're also in the, the skeleton room. I don't believe any activity comes from these guys. I think that they are at rest, they're at, you know, they're at peace. Uh, most of them donated their body to science. Uh, so I think that they're, you know, they're chilling with, you know, the little bodies and all of them are kind of decorated to the fullest. Um, but these are all real human skeletons. Yes, every single one of them is real. So they all have names. We call it our bony bunch or our lucky seven. Uh, as of right now, you know, they all have their names. They all have their respective places. They all have come from different time periods. We even have an odd fellow skeleton named Mortimer who is right here and he's just, he's one of our favorites, but don't tell, don't, don't tell the rest of them that. And of course, you know, as we, have gone through this location we were on a you know the travel channel uh after we were on one of the ghost shows there people started sending us haunted objects from like all over the world so we have ones from australia south africa virginia you know um you know as local as as new jersey pennsylvania so it kind of became a haunted museum in itself that was already haunted so now we have a lot more activity than we used to, but it's never a dull moment. So you never know what's gonna happen in here. You never know what you're gonna get, what you're gonna capture, what you're gonna hear, what you're gonna feel. So far, we've been able to 
theorize that everybody here seems to be intelligent. So we ask questions, they always answer. You know, they do love interaction and we think that here, unlike most haunted locations, they do get the interaction since we are an active working tattoo studio. Um, they get people on the daily, they get us on the daily. It's not just, you know, hey, we're gonna go investigate them on the weekend. We're, we're with these guys every single day. So for us, we get to document a lot of activity. We get to see things that most normal paranormal investigators don't get to see because we're with them all day, sometimes into the evenings. So this is the doorway that the two buildings were actually married together. This is the area that we do get a ton of activity. Don't really know why. We believe there is a portal, at least that's what many investigators and psychics that have come through here have said that. They said it's kind of like a, a hotel that's you know never fully occupied. As people walk through here, they will feel a slight difference in the temperature change. Many times right in this area, it is freezing cold. And then as we start to yonder upstairs, then it gets a lot warmer, but in a different kind of heavy sense. This area, <laughs> as you can clearly see, is taken over by haunted vessels. There are hundreds here. Uh, we are now the keepers of them. Never knew what to expect, never wanted to be, but I'm happy we are. Um, we love them all dearly, we treat them like family. And I think that that's the difference. You know, We're not afraid of them, even when they do some of their antics or throw things off of walls. We've had it, we've come in in the mornings where our stuff is moved off of our tattoo stations. Um, they do tend to like to turn off our tattoo machines and our power units uh, when we're least expecting it. I've had multiple electricians out here. There's not a problem, so we figured it's them. In this area, you're gonna see what's our cellarization room. My shop manager has always had issues in here, so have other employees that have worked here where they hear a male talking to them. It's like he's standing right over you. You can feel him breathing, you can hear him breathing. A lot of times too, they will uh, open up the door to where we keep our brooms and our mops and whatnot. Why, I don't know, I guess they wanna help clean. I, I'll take the help, trust me, it's a big, it's a big studio. <laughs> they, they can help all they want. But yeah, in here we do get a lot of activity, a lot of orbs, especially right in this section that you're in right now. It always has had a lot of activity to it. This is a lot of times too where you will hear our resident whistler that we call him. We don't know his name, like I said before, it may be Wilbert. We don't know. We're trying to figure that out. We've been trying to figure it out for years. He hasn't left, so apparently he's, he's stationary here. As we walk through, uh, we have had interesting things happen with different customers. It's unfortunate, I have a really hard time keeping artists because of the activity here and it's been a really long ongoing process to find people that are not afraid of the paranormal because like I said, this is all day, this is all night, it doesn't matter if it's a holiday, it doesn't matter what time of day, if something's going to happen, they don't care that the lights are out. They're gonna do it. Unfortunately, the artists that we used to have, two of the artists that we used to have working at this station have physically seen someone standing in the corner of them as they have been working on people. And they didn't like that too much. They have been touched, they have been physically pulled, their chair has been moved on them as they're trying to tattoo. We've even had some of their clients in this area specifically say, you know, you know, to their friends that they bring with them, you know, why are you touching me? I'm trying to get a tattoo, like don't move me. And poor person's not doing a damn thing. They're just standing there or they're sitting there reading a book and they're like, I didn't touch you. So it's kind of funny because where my station is located, which is in the corner, I can actually physically see the interactions with people and I just kind of chuckle because I know what's going on, but they don't, so it's a lot creepier to them. So while people yeah. are getting tattooed, they actually are getting touched. Oh, Artists yeah, are... yeah, so a lot of the clientele here, you know, at first when this all started, we bought this building in July of 2014. We opened October 1st of 2014, so we only took a few months to get this place up and running. Little things would happen, and I would just chalk it off to either it's residual, we're doing a lot of you know construction, destruction to the property. Um, I figured it was just gonna go away, and then for the most part, when our tattoo machines are running, we can't hear a lot of it, and plus we have music playing for the clients. When everything shut down, that's when you start to hear all the different sounds and the cracks and the creaks. So we have actually, um, <laughs> we, <laughs> I know, I heard it. <laughs> we have actually 
um, tried to debunk everything in this place. So I'm not the first one to say, oh, that was a ghost. No, I'm gonna say that's the air conditioner kicking on, or that's this, or that's that. But when we just can't debunk it, we kind of have to draw that line of like a question mark. You know, what was that? What made that sound? There's nothing in here that makes this sound or that sound. The customers started to get a little freaked out because they would be touched, physically touched. Their shirts would be pulled. You know, a lot of the males that would come in here to get tattooed would hear a, a grown man come in their ear and say, hey, you know, and it would freak them out and they would jump as I'm trying to tattoo them. And I'm like, guys, you can't move. Like, what is wrong with you? Are you crazy? They were like, just some dude was just in my ear and they're like looking around and, and nobody's there, but we couldn't hear it physically, but they were in their ear and they heard it. People have had their feet tickled. Uh, we have one that's the pit pocketer. He loves male wallets, especially if they're in your back pocket. So you take them out. You'll do better. <laughs> and um, the hair being pulled, hair being tugged. Our poor shop manager and our other artists are always getting touched, grabbed. Their shirts are being tugged on behind. We've even had people where they're walking out and it, they say it feels like a little kid grabs a hold of their leg um, as they're walking. I even had a customer pretty much fall to his knee because he felt somebody grab him and he couldn't explain it. We have had, you know, like I said, full body apparitions here. We have everything here. It's it's kind of crazy to me because I wasn't expecting. I figured, okay, maybe we'll see something or a shadow or, you know, hear somebody talking or laughing. But sometimes you'll come, you'll be in the front and come back just to this area and you'll hear, it sounds like women having tea. You know, it's <laughs> like clinking glasses and whatnot. Um, we've had it where we've heard high heels walk from where our piercing room is out front all the way back here and then just dissipate right about the mirror. Um, a lot of people don't feel right around this mirror area. And you know what they say about mirrors, so I don't have to get into that. But uh, these mirrors were just put up by us, you know, for our tattoo clients to be able to see their tattoos. But a lot of people really don't like this area for some odd reason. Um, I've never felt anything weird about it, but a lot of people have walked through here and felt dizzy or just not felt right. You know, we've had it where our employee bathroom customers and other employees have been sitting there where we hear the, the handle going and then the door will open and there's nobody there. So they can open doors here, they have. Um, they can lock doors here, they certainly have. That's why you never forget your keys when you walk out of this place. A lot of tapping, a lot of banging. Um, they will flicker the lights a lot. Sometimes they will even shut them off. There was a time during COVID when I would just watch the cameras and I would come here every two days just to check on things, make sure everybody was good, behaving themselves. And there was a time where in the sterilization room, it wasn't being used, we weren't allowed to tattoo. The light was on completely, I was the only one here. And then by the time I got home, the light was off watching the cameras and I got on the camera I said hey guys just please shut the light off and I guess they listened because like two hours later it was off so that was kind of cool wow. that was kind of cool so the history of the place the only thing that we can surmise from going down to the township and looking up records um, I even stalked the original owner who had this place last so this place I forgot to mention sat here vacant for three and a half years before I wound up purchasing it. That owner was an architect. He did share the building with a, with a landscaping firm. Uh, I kind of stalked them and took his number, don't tell nobody, all for the records. And I called him and I just said, hey man, I said, you know, I know you had this place for a while. Can you tell me, did you ever experience anything here? You know, aliens, whatever, just anything. And he says, I don't believe in that shit. He says, but I've never heard anything. He goes, honestly, this was the quietest place that I've ever lived in. And he actually had an apartment upstairs, which you guys will be going up into, which is now our library. And he said he never heard anything. He says, maybe Maybe, maybe if something was there, I just didn't hear it. So I chalked it up to, okay, this place sat here vacant. It was quiet. Nobody was bothering it. There may have been a few vagrants that actually did break in. Um, maybe squatters that lived here for a little bit. We did find trash everywhere. A lot of dead bugs, especially upstairs. It was very, it was very light and airy the first day I walked in here to even look at the place. As soon as we started with all the construction, that's when it got very heavy and very dark. But yeah, he said nothing ever happened. It started for us right away. So I just, again, I assumed that it was residual. I resumed, okay, we're stirring shit up. Why not? Okay, they're gonna go away, but they never actually went away. They got stronger and it seemed like more of them came out to play. Hmm. So this area, we actually had a tattoo artist one time who also quit <laughs> because of the, the ghostly activity. Um, they would pull her chair, her rolly chair, just pull her as she was trying to work. Oh and God. there was a few times where she kind of thought she was on a slant, but the force of the pull kind of wasn't slant. She said, somebody is grabbing my chair. So we asked them to not. I just don't think they liked her. <laughs> so I think they're, they're like my best HR department ever. Um, so I actually ask the ghosts if they like somebody before they come in here because they, they kind of tell me, you know. When you get over into this area, a lot of times you will get clinks on the glass, you will hear it, especially when this is my area when I'm tattooing, you will hear 
like somebody's throwing pebbles at the glass when there's nothing going on outside. Um, they will open up our drawers here a lot of the times. Um, you know, we'll close it. We thought it was just on an incline, but they're metal doors and you will physically hear them being pulled out. In my area especially, you will get touched. For some reason, I don't know if it's just because they're coming from the downstairs or you know, from the upstairs down or downstairs up, whatever the case may be. This area, a lot of people have had you know, experiences where their shirt feels like it's getting tugged and then let go. Um, you'll have your hair pulled. You know, not in a malicious way, but almost like hee hee, like I, I'm, I'm here. The people have had their feet tickled while I'm trying to tattoo them. They've heard a lot of things. There was an investigator one time who said that she started to feel like a lot of heat and pinching around her breast area. And she says it's just weird because she, she, she moved, the feeling was gone. She went back in the chair, it was there. This area too will get severely cold, especially behind us. And there are no vents behind us. So that's a little bit odd. Sometimes we'll be sitting here and I have the complete chills and I have to stop tattooing for a few minutes because it is like somebody just put us in a freezer. Occasionally you will see my tray move on its own where if I have it stationary, I even have my foot on it, I feel somebody tug it, which is a little bit weird. We've asked them to not. So they, they, they kind of, they do listen when they ask, but I think that there are a lot of kids too and they just want to do what they want to do and that's okay by me, you know, as long as they're not breaking things. Now you start to get to the upstairs. So this was the, Above us was the course of where everything started, at least for me, the initial start of everything that's been going on in this place. Um, we would hear footsteps clearly walk from above all the way to the steps, start to come down the steps and then dissipate and go away. Uh, male boots especially, that's the sound of it. It's like a, a heavy boot sound. We actually had a guy in here a couple weeks ago doing an interview on us for a tattoos and review. And when he went upstairs, just to kind of, you know, do a little, little B-roll, a little, <laughs> you know, walk around, he stopped walking and he heard footsteps and he actually caught it on his recorder, which is wow. kind of cool because he was a little shocked because he didn't know anything about this place. So it kind of freaked him out, but he was like, it's kind of cool at the same time. These are what I always call the infamous steps. Um, apparently, as per the architect, these steps were never actually built in this, in this part of the property. The room that you're in right now used to be a viewing room for uh, deceased family members, which is kind of cool. And this is where the bodies would lay for a few days until the burial finally happened for all the family to come through. Now keep in mind, this part that you're in right now is not original to this property and this location, nor the building you just came through. This was actually picked up and moved from about a little less than a mile, a little less than a mile down the road. This was a very old building too, but I have not been able to pinpoint or nail down the exact age of it originally before they made it all one building. Um, this is also the room too, where one of our investigators came out to give us a reveal of what they had found the last and previous investigation that they had done. So myself and another investigator were sitting on this pew right here and we actually had bolted it to the floor so it doesn't move when people sit down since it's on a hardwood. We were sitting here very quietly, just leaning back, listening to the evidence when all of a sudden it felt like somebody came up behind the pew. And as you can see, there's windows here, bang on the pew. And we actually went flying to the point where the investigator that was giving the reveal said to us, are you guys okay? And we said, we don't know what just happened. So that kind of started everything in this room. The next thing you know, maybe about 10, 15 minutes later, we started hearing a woman from upstairs yelling down, hello. Like it was really that ghostly, creepy voice that you can't make up and you, you find in a movie. We all kind of turned and looked up the stairs. Nothing was there. One of the investigators was like, oh, I got to put a recorder up here. So she stuck a recorder up at the top of the steps as this was going on. And they were sitting mid step. As soon as she said that, these two fluorescents that we have up here started to swing which they don't swing, as you can see, they're on chains, but there's nothing up here, the fan wasn't on, there's no reason for them to swing. They sort of stopped, and then that was when we heard the next female voice, which did sound slightly different, say, oh my God, because we were down here talking, so I think that they wanted us to go investigate them because they were kind of getting bored and they were listening. After that happened, the whole night just went to hell. <laughs> like, it was just popping off left and right. They weren't even planning an investigation that night, but it was so much energy going on and so many things happening at that time. They were like, we have to, like, we just, we have to stay here and do an investigation, which I was totally down with because I want to know too. All right, I guess we'll head upstairs. Yeah. And we'll kind of give you that, that feeling. Now, Debbie might be a good one to pop on to this one because she's up here a lot doing the cleaning. And a lot of times she has to stop doing her cleaning. If, if we'll get into it, well, I'll let her tell you that. 
Oh, it's a lot heavier up here now, Debbie. Okay, so this is our library. Storage area. A lot of times we have cameras, uh, security cameras and footage downstairs that we can watch all the time just to see when customers come and go, make sure we know somebody's in the waiting room. A lot of times when I have clients in the chair, of course I can't watch the cameras. They will actually physically say that they see a shadow come from here, from the back room. Sometimes this light will turn on or dim by itself if it's on. This is where the footsteps usually come from. So sometimes you'll hear it coming from the kitchen area and it is like clear as day coming on this angle like I showed you downstairs and then nothing. Many times when people are up here, as you can see, I'm getting a little heavy in the chest. This area is not a place that I even want to stay up here very long. It's very heavy. It does cause a lot of just drainage of your energy. Um, it makes a lot of people dizzy up here, kind of like the funhouse effect. And sometimes it even makes it hard to talk up here. Now, right now, I can tell you it wasn't heavy like this earlier when we came up here. Right now, and every time somebody new comes into their territory in this section for some reason, they don't like it. So <laughs> I'm gonna cut this one a little shorter if Debbie wants to jump in and let you know what happened to her. I'll I'm gonna take a second because it's just a little too much for me up here. So cleaning up here, um, the first time I did it, it was very heavy. I had to like keep stopping, taking breaks, running down the sofa like, hey, I can't finish. Like, is it all right if I do this another day? Um, but after a while, I've learned to just, when I come up here to clean, just let them know, hey you guys, just let me clean. I'll be out of your hair as soon as I can. That seems to work until one day I was cleaning in the kitchen. I was wiping the counter down and a juicer went flying across the room. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell just happened? So I'm like, all right, maybe I hit it. So I put it back in the holder, tried to whack the counter, kick the counter, do whatever to see if it was me that caused it. It was not budging. So now I only really clean if somebody comes up here with me because I refuse to be up here by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. That yeah, makes sense. It <laughs> does make sense. Real quick, I want to say when I was pointing this way, the autofocus started focusing on the pew, like head level of like where someone would sit right really? behind her. Just now. <laughs> well, it's actually funny that you say that because on on these pews up here, uh, we've had many investigators where they have heard somebody, especially in this pew here, they've sat right in that corner where it felt they said that they were touched or heard something or someone in their ear. This pew particularly, this was where the one investigator that I showed you the, uh, the reel of the EVP that he caught, he was sitting on this pew exactly when he asked, you know, where did the church pews come from, do you know? And that's when you hear a male voice very heavy say Dover. Where'd the church pews come from, do you know? Now again, he didn't hear that in real time. They heard it on their five minute spurt recorder, but it's really interesting because we've also had other clients come up here and sit um, and say that it feels like somebody comes up and touches their leg. You will sometimes, if you sit on these pews, even hear somebody sit next to you. Like it's really crazy. And you know the sound of a church pew. It's, it's a distinct Very sound. Very distinct. Pretty. Very distinct sound. So we've had it where, um, you know, we've been up here, we have left balls, we've had balls move uh, up here. You know, sometimes you'll hear like a little kid kind of like knocking on the pew, like a little kid like being bad, you know, like a little tiny, tiny tot. Up here too, we do get a lot of children presences, but there is also a male presence up here that's not very friendly and not very fond of people in his space. Now, we don't know if that's one of the original owners whose name was Dennis. We've been trying to figure that out for years. Um, we've never gotten a name Dennis. We've gotten other names or if it's just a spirit that just is just stuck here uh, Doesn't want to leave. Uh, we did do a cleansing at one point I'm not really in the cleansings anymore because once we cleansed then everything got stirred up and we had more spirits than we thought <laughs> um, So now we just we don't do the cleansings. We just respect them. We ask them to respect us But especially in this back room, it does get extremely extremely heavy. You cannot stay in there very long um, it will actually even get darker than what it is. It's weird. It's like something shadow casts out the entire room and then it comes back to normal light, which is very unique and interesting. You know, as far as we've had people come up here with pucks, um, of course, with ovuluses and everything else. And there are a lot of children that are very, you know, talkative up here as well, especially if they had, you know, if they have the energy to do it. Okay, turning it back on again. Now that would be great if you could do that or even hit the piano. Or even touch that orb right there. Is it time to answer? 
Go ahead, keep hitting it. Is that, that you? you? That sounds nice. Can you do some more? If you're a child, that's here for you to play with. Um, but definitely the male spirit, he he makes people very uneasy. Originally when I, I had another business partner, he would come up here, he's been scratched, he had been pushed. Um, he came up here one time antagonizing whatever was up here, which God knows, I have no idea why, because he was an idiot. That's why we're not business partners. But, uh, you know, he had come up here and he was like, ha oh, do something, hey, hey, hey. All of a sudden, a male voice, he, 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 like, was like kind of mocking him, like, okay, I'll show you what I can do. And he came down with a huge scratch across his stomach. Oh um, and he didn't feel at the time, he started feeling burning. He came downstairs and he, and I was in the middle of a tattoo with a client. And he's like, it's something on my stomach. I mean, you could see it, it was a huge well. He said, man, it really burns. And he didn't feel good. He actually went home that day because he just didn't feel right. Did I see that somebody saw a charred infant? Yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, but that was my old business partner. I wasn't sure if he was just certifiably nuts or um, if he really did see it. But, you know, I knew the man for a long time and he wasn't really one to make things up. He, when he came down, I mean, he was, excuse my pun, white as a ghost. He came downstairs, he was cold, he was clammy. He goes, I just saw something. At first he actually thought it was a raccoon. He thought we had raccoons in here because he said it was about the size of a raccoon. And when he was coming up the steps, it was dark up here and he saw it scurry across the floor and he actually freaked out because he thought it was a raccoon. But then when he stopped for a minute seeing where it went to see if there was a hole in one of the walls or if it was coming in through the ceiling, uh, once he noticed that it wasn't, that's when he said it looked like a ch some kind of a charred baby that was kind of dysfunctional and almost looked like, like, a, like a spider in a weird way, but without the eight legs. A charred baby spider. Yeah, so the, it, was, it was really, really weird. Um, I just kind of chalked it up to, okay, maybe he's stressed now. Maybe he thought he saw a shadow. See, I always try to debunk everything, like I said, in here first before we even go the ghost or the spirit route. We've had the burglar alarm go off a, a few times. We have had police officers have to come up here and they hate coming up here. And I tell them, you have the gun. So <laughs> if it's somebody, at least you can protect yourself. But I think too, that the, the realization is, is this area right that we're in right now was the heaviest of all. This was at least for us where all of the activity originally started or originated from. Now, whether it was all throughout the building and they just got more used to us over the years, that the years that we've been here. Um, but as far as now goes, this is still the heaviest part of the building. None of us like to stay up here too long. And we usually announce ourselves before we come up the steps to let whoever is up here know. Uh, multiple times people have seen somebody start to manifest where they've seen legs coming up the steps and they disappear. Um, so now, so that we don't get freaked out and, and scared uh, and to give them the proper, you know, what, what they deserve, we just, we just announce ourselves, say, hey, we're coming up, we gotta get some supplies, and that's it, <laughs> when we're out. <laughs> That makes sense. I mean, it is hot as hell up here, too. It's weird, right? It's weird. I got the vents and stuff like that. And, you know, heat rises. Yeah. But this place gets, some days, it's not this hot. And other days, it is like a, an inferno in here. And it's not that hot out today. So this this room, just because all the years we've been here, this temperature should just be your normal. Just normal, probably in the, like, 60s. Right. But right now, it feels like it's, like, 85 up here. Hmm. I am sweaty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like, oh, I can see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel it. It's, it's, it's actually yeah. hard for me to talk and to breathe up here. As you can see, I kind of am losing my train of thought at this point up in this this part of the building. Um, that's why, again, we try not to come up here. Um, sometimes, too, you will get chased down the steps. <laughs> oh. Just a little fun fact. Um, fun. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been up here where her and I are walking, and then all of a sudden, it's like somebody just kind of... <laughs> we're like, whoa, all right, we're going, you know? Because it freaks you out, you know? You're not expecting somebody behind you, and you can't see them. So, of course, it's going to be a little like... Uh, all right, we're going. Yeah, something. I'm a terrified of that. <laughs> Someone behind you that you can't see running at you. Mm-hmm. The book that went flying off the shelf. Oh. So I come in one day and she was in the middle of tattooing a client. She's like, yo, she's like, I need you to do me a favor. I was like, what? She's like, can you go upstairs? I heard a really loud thump. I can't see it on the camera. I don't know what it is. I come up here. There's a book on the ground. Now, usually if a book falls off the shelf, it just falls. This was open to a page and the book was the, the history of surgery or <laughs> the yeah the history of surgery, of surgery. <laughs> I'm like, and that book is as you can see if you thin. if you look at these if you look at all of the books up here they are in like this this is this was it's actually this book right here yeah and it was actually oh. behind 
and came flying out. So as you can see, there's nothing really falling. Even these guys are not falling off the shelves. Um, but yeah, right in the middle of the floor, rather than right Actually, down. Right about where you were. So yeah. from, oh. there, from here to there, and wow. it was open. And the Just, topic was what threw me, the history of surgery. You know that a book is not just going to fly off the That's shelf. what, when, when she came up here, because it does, as you can see, I mean, these guys are really tight in here. It's not, this, this is not coming out. Um, and we made sure of that because I didn't want to have to deal with books coming off and me having to come up here and clean them because nobody likes to come up in this area. Yeah, his camera battery just died. Yeah, I know, I heard it. Well, that thing should, mine's, ours were charged the same, mine's only three quarters full. Which means that yours... Welcome to the convent. <laughs> yeah. well, I guess you gotta go swap that out then quick. Alrighty, so welcome to the piercing room. Um, this section of the building, like again before, this is the first part of the building that was built in 1950. Uh, we never really had too much activity in here until the past couple of years. Um, this is our piercing chair, so a lot of times when I have people in the chair, what they will see is basically the doorway. If they're sitting here, they're seeing the doorway. Many times I will catch them where they kind of look around and I'm like, everything cool? And they're like, somebody was just standing there. And there's nobody else here except for us and them. And then I think, oh shit, there's a customer outside. Like, give me a minute, like, let me go, let me go see. And there's nobody here. We've had it too where people have said that they've seen little kids like peeking in, sort of, sort of from the side. Um, a lot of dark shadow figures. In this room particularly, we do get a lot of bangs, a lot of clangs when there's nothing for it to bang or clang. Many times too, myself and my shop manager will get tugged on the back of the shirt if we're in the middle of say piercing somebody. It's coming from behind, there's just nobody there. A lot of times you'll see us turn around thinking that we're stuck to something. As you can see, it's all open area. So there's nothing for us to get stuck on. As we go down this hallway, there was an incident uh, that was, that was pretty, pretty rough in here. Um, we have some rosaries that we hang everywhere just because we're the convent and it's kind of cool. And we just like rosaries. Uh, doesn't mean we're religious, we just think they're beautiful. Um, and it does keep some of our demonics at bay, luckily. Um, but there was a time where we were all in this piercing room and all of a sudden you felt a huge gust of cold air literally whip around everybody. You hear the rosaries that are hanging on the wall out here start to kind of shimmy and shake. It sounded like somebody literally picked them up off the cross that they're on and just threw them to the floor. That was interesting because those rosaries have been there for the past five years and have never fallen. Um, but the way that they fell, it wasn't just like they kind of dropped to the floor. It was literally like somebody was picking them up to throw them. That one was that one was pretty interesting and it never happened again, but it was that one time where it physically flew and they actually landed here in the corner of the piercing room where the door is. As we go down the hallway, I'll kind of show you. This is the hallway and as you can see, it's kind of ominous, very dark. Um, this is the area too where we've heard the woman with the high heels walk from the piercing room all the way out, clear high heels. It wasn't just a light footstep we heard. It sounded like we left a customer in here and it was on a Sunday, I'll never forget it. It was around 5.30, we were closing up for the evening. We were sitting behind the desk doing our QuickBooks. All of a sudden we heard these high heels and we thought, oh shit, like there's a customer in here. Like we're like, hello, <laughs> and literally thought we listened, we heard it followed them all the way up the ramp, saw absolutely nothing, no shadows, no orbs, nothing. Heard the high heels until they finally went away. <laughs> that one was pretty cool because I'd never heard a woman's high heels before. You know, everybody says footsteps, but these were clearly high heels. As we come this way, so this is our lovely basement. Um, the basement is not too heavy, which is kind of nice. You would think the basement would be the creepy part, but no, that upstairs is the creepy part. The basement has its own resonance, we believe. We do believe that one of the original owners, Bertha, who I mentioned before, does kind of stay down there. This was her house for a very long time. Many times, too, if people are walking this way and they, they just happen to catch it the right time, you will see a shadow figure that will stand in the corner of the basement even if the lights on and peek out and then peek back and sometimes we think is that an animal we go down there there's nothing there um, we've had people too we do have it's kind of cool we actually do have some ghost dogs and cats here as well um, many times while we're up front here we will have barking in the back coming from the back room there's nobody here of course there's no dogs here we have had occasions where people have been here painting for us um, some workers where they've heard what sounds like a cat hissing 
in the basement where we've gone down thinking a cat got in and there's nothing down there. Um, we have even actually had a few customers see a cat run from out here and said, oh, like your cat's cute. And I'm like, we don't have a cat here, you know, unless they're, you know, deceased. So that one's been pretty interesting too. Um, so we're gonna head down to the basement. Like I said, you're gonna feel a difference. It's a lot lighter, a lot, you know, you can breathe. Let's just put it that way. You can breathe. You can Come on breathe. now. I, I like to breathe. <laughs> Me too. That's good. <laughs> uh, so actually, this little crevice right here, funny story, where the wall and the crevice don't meet, uh, we've had it where people have actually seen a little old lady's head walk past here. We've had it done multiple times. I don't know if that's Bertha or if that's another one, but we're just going to call her Bertha for the sake of it was her house. Also, sometimes when you come down to the bottom of these steps, you will actually catch a man say, hey, bud, you know, deep little voice, not, you know, menacing, just, hey, what you doing? Which also, see, I just remembered another story. One of our investigators here one time heard his team in the downstairs area that you guys will be investigating later. And he said, everybody, let's just go quiet. Let's just listen for sounds, see what's going on. Two male investigators were on the tattoo floor. He was upstairs in the library and he heard males talking. So he came racing down. He goes, guys, I told you it's like quiet. Like we're not speaking. We're not asking questions. We're just listening to the different sounds, taps, seeing if we hear anything. And they said, that's not us. We heard it too. So there were two men talking in the tattoo area. So he says, oh, that's interesting. What does he do? He forgets his recorder upstairs at the pew, starts to go back up the steps and hears somebody say, what's up? <laughs> just, wow. just, just clear as day. And he said, uh, he turned around and said, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so they're very interesting on the steps, especially. It's kind of weird. Um, but especially down here, we've had, hey, bud. Uh, we've had the name Steven, like I'm Steven. Uh, we don't we can't figure out who Steven is. We've looked on the death records. So we don't know who Steven is, but he likes to hang out down here. So. Maybe Steven will come out tonight, I don't know. So as you can see, not your typical basement. It's kind of nice. We keep it really clean and neat because I don't want anything creepy crawly on me or anybody else. <laughs> and uh, we never know what's gonna get, you know, come down here. So many of times in the corner towards the back, people have seen, especially other investigators, have captured shadows. They do say that they see like a man standing in the corner. He seems a little shy and timid, so we don't press the issue too much. If he wants to come out and talk, he knows he's welcome to. We don't know if that's Steven particularly, but we have gotten a name when they've said, hey, I see you in the corner. Do you have a name? And we have gotten Steven. Down here was where they actually... Down here on the steps. Where'd you, where'd you feel like that came from, Connor? I, yeah, I felt like it came from right here. So it could be Steven. <laughs> um, we also do have Bertha. Um, Bertha was, you know, like I said before, the original owner. She is down here uh, many of the times. But the interesting thing is after the first time that they captured her saying that she wasn't moving, when nobody was asking her to move and she knows that she's welcome here all the time. Uh, the second time they came back for an investigation, they came down here after we had some more evidence of who it could have been. Uh, and they said, Bertha, you know, we know that you didn't die here. She did not die on this property. You know, why are you here? Like, you know, like we're not telling you to leave, but why are you here? And they did catch the same female's voice a little bit later. She said to visit. So that was kind of nice that it's kind of cool knowing that, you know, they can come and go or she can come and go as she pleases and whenever she feels like it. Um, so that was kind of just a really nice, you know, way to express like, hey, I loved my house. You know, I lived here a long time. I lived here from 1950. And the fact that like, I still come back to visit and check up on it. So it's kind of neat, you know? We haven't really had too much with child interaction down here. It seems to be more of the adults and probably more of the, the owners of the original property. Like I said, Steven, uh, we do know there's a Steven down here. Um, there was a time when, when the one crew from the Travel Channel came out. Uh, they heard a bell down here and we have heard jingling bells down here. We've heard what sounds like keys down here. There's nothing around here. We've checked everything that that sound could be made. He even checked and he goes, there's nothing here that jingles. And I said, I know, I don't, you know, we've heard it before. There are times too, when we go back up the steps that sometimes it will sound like somebody's following us up. You know, it's funny too, because in this corner where you see the wall is a different color. We just recently found out that one of the old owners would get in a fight with his wife and he built himself a room down here with just a bed and like a TV. We never knew that, which was kind of neat. And, and he, one of his relatives came in and said, hey, like, let me show you around. So we started to ask them questions like, hey, like who was here, who was there? 
And he said he used to sit down here by himself so he didn't have to listen to his wife screaming at him. And this was his little, his little cubby hole. So there was no, nothing to show us, you know, there was no beams, there was no walls down here when we first bought the buildings, it was just an open basement. So we would have never known that. So it was kind of cool that the family came. Um, now we do have a crawl space. Uh, the other part of the building that we were in, this is the only basement basement. The other part has just a crawl space where our heating system and duct work is. When we've had technicians come out to service our heater, there have been some strange things that have happened to them. So they get a, on a crawler, a creeper, whatever you want to call it. They creep on down because it's a little bit ways, ways down the, uh, the edge of the, the end of the building. And they have had it where it, they've, sa they've said they've sounded like somebody is down there talking to them, which is a male voice. We've also had it where the creeper has been pulled back here. And when we go to get to it to go and change our filters, the creeper's all the way at the other end. Like, it's dirt. It's not going anywhere, you know? <laughs> it's, it's pretty, it's pretty That's interesting. That's crazy. Um, we've even had it too where I've asked some of these technicians to try to take some photos down there for me, see if I can catch any orbs, any kind of shadows. Every time they seem to catch photos down there, they're all blurry. Every single one has like a blur or like a, a sandy hue to it. It's really, really weird. Um, but many times they don't like to go down there. They only come out here like twice a year to change the filters because, yeah, they, they're not happy with that area. <laughs> Um, Makes sense. Yeah, but so you know, there's sometimes too where, where if we're if we know we're here by ourselves and say if I have to come down to the basement to get some paint or something like that, you will hear footsteps, and it's all wood floor, and it's the old wood floor that's above us. Um, you will hear footsteps where I'm thinking a customer's here, and I go running up like thinking somebody's here, and there's nobody here. Clear as day. Um, you know, sometimes it does start from where the piercing room is, which is over in this area, and it does go to that area of the floor because that's where the tattoo area is. So. We get a lot down here. You know, it's it's just one of those buildings where I'd be more comfortable in the basement <laughs> than I would upstairs. Uh, it does feel more comfortable down here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I guess you said earlier, six deaths on the property. So what we've been told from other investigators and the historical society, there have been at least six deaths that they can pinpoint with different names. Um, I believe I even have, actually have the death certificate, like where they used to write all the old names back in the day here. Um, and then she did actually give me a map of the property too, which was kind of cool. But she was able to definitely attest there were six deaths that were actually on this property. Now, whether it was in these buildings, I don't believe it was because this building was built in 1950 and we know that Bertha did not die in this building. Um, and she didn't die on this property either, which is kind of cool. That's why she comes back to visit. But as far as the farmers go, um, there was another family here that we believe uh, the Cunard family, they were a family of traveling clowns, which was kind of cool. And they were known in this area for doing so with the creepy makeup. And they weren't trying to be creepy clowns. They just, for that time period, that's what they did. Um, we do believe there may be a few Cunard family members that are part of this building as well. There is another gentleman named Dennis. Uh, Dennis was apparently the biggest importer exporter of some kind of pond equipment or something. I'm not totally sure is what I heard from the family but apparently Dennis did not die in that building either he died at a trade show in Atlanta with his business partner so but Dennis was also a workaholic loved his women his booze and his his money <laughs> so I don't know if sometimes Dennis is up in that upstairs area because that was his old office from what I was told you said it keeps some of the demonic darker things at bay are there any items that you have that kind of just like scare you the thing that might be attached to it that gives you the... Well, actually, it's, it's funny. Um, most of the items that people have sent us, I've been able to kind of get chill with, you know, and, and, and kind of get to learn and working with them, um, having other people work with them with myself. Um, I think a lot of them, a lot of the demonics that we have here are misunderstood. They might be a little low-level demonics, but there is one that just shockingly just came in today that was like lost for a week and a half. She was a little heavy and it was actually just before you guys got here and I was actually very dizzy and, and started getting an instant headache and so did my shop manager when we opened her. Almost like Raggedy Ann's sister, you know, she looks just like her, smaller version. She does have rosaries with her and she is uh, in a glass case and that's how she came. You know, of course I put on gloves 
kind of put her in there. I put her with my other demonic, Red. She's strong, and I think that she's probably gonna wreak a lot of havoc. Just, just from the sense she's the first one that has come in here that I'm a little like, ooh, shit. <laughs> so, uh, we'll, we'll see. I, you know, once I get to investigate her a little bit more, then I'll know a little bit more about her. Um, but the last keeper that she had didn't even know where she came from. She's, I don't remember ever purchasing her. I don't remember ever getting gifted her. She goes, I don't know where she came from. But now, you know, she's here. So I guess we're going to see. But she's, she's strong. She's, she's a little different than everybody else so far. You know, I, when she first came in, you know, I secret Tilly off to the side when you guys were setting up. Kind of asked her, so look, you respect me. I'll respect you. Please don't break anything. Don't follow anybody home. Do not hurt us. Do not hurt anybody who walks in here. And we'll get along fine. You know, I'll give her her respect, her space, but she needs to do the same with us or she's gone. So. I think we'll be the first people then to investigate her tonight. You, you actually <laughs> probably, you will, because we haven't even, you know, I, I unboxed her. I put her off to the side. She was already kicking up the K2 when Debbie was asking her, you know, set it up to yellow and hold it. She did do that when you guys were setting up. We just wanted to kind of see. <laughs> and uh, she was doing it. So that was pretty fast right out of the box. Um, you know, and some of the spirits that people have sent us here, learning more about other than our residents that we're still getting to know. Uh, and there still are multiple ones that come and go, which is kind of cool. Uh, but a lot of the, the spirited items that we have here now, which is basically a haunted museum in itself, you know, they sometimes they can take six months, sometimes they can take a year. And a lot of times when people send this stuff, I'm like, this thing is not haunted. There's no way. All of a sudden, it's like I start to say that. And they're like, hey, look at me. Here I am. <laughs> um, and then they just blow up. You know, but a lot of the, I do keep the demonics a little bit separated from everybody else because I don't want their energies. We do have a lot of children spirits here. Um, I don't want their energies to kind of deflect onto them and, and make them kind of shell, shell in and, and shut down. Um, because again, they have free reign. So they can do and come and go as, as they please. Like I said, we just have a few rules. They can't break anything. They can't harm anybody. They can't harm us. Um, they cannot follow anybody home, so I don't want any of the public thinking that, oh my God, I'm gonna go in there and get an attachment. I can't tell you you're not. They are asked to do that, and we've never had a problem yet, and it's been years since they've been here, so I think they're kind of happy here. They get all the interaction that they could possibly ever want, even from regular spirit keepers that have them in their house. Um, they get everything. Customers, they get you know us on a daily basis, and they get the other spirits, too. Wow. Well. I'm excited. Man. Me too. This is a uh, a lot of ground cover. A lot of spirits to potentially talk to. Like hundreds. One hundred percent. Yeah. Well. All right. So um, some of our favorite dolls. Don't tell nobody. Um, this is Norman. He's our shadow man. Um, he's very active. Uh, you will see different dark shadows around him. He's completely harmless. Unfortunately, his his story is a little bit more like Norman Bates and his mother. The mother was sort of the same. Uh, many psychics who have had him in their possession have said the same thing. Um, he will sometimes give off extreme headaches, but they think that's because that's what he was suffering with when he was younger. Um, and that's kind of why he does act out. But people have actually had him in their car, have seen like a male arm come in between their car, not knowing what it was. Um, so he's very strong. And then of course we have our, our favorite poltergeist, Jeremy. We love him. He, he just loves to f with people. That's just it. Like, he just loves it. He's totally harmless, but he loves attention. Of course, this one just came in from Waco, Texas. Uh, we don't know much about it yet. It just came in this week, so we haven't really had a chance to really investigate it yet. Um, but he's you know, pretty creepy on his own little level, if it's even a male, but we, we assume it's a male. So we just kind of got a little height chair from a thrift store and popped him in a figure. And that he'd be... tag is interesting, too. Yeah, the, the tag's awesome. You know, this was apparently what the store employees made for him uh, which I think is hilarious so we can't remove the tag of course <laughs> you know some of these guys if they start going off for you tonight um, they're actually really funny they're really sweet a lot of them here were very very interactive with us um, especially some of my big boys up here um, Josh is like my bestie um, Abigail you may see her move she does move from time to time uh, Emilio as well he likes to kind of bring his face up to you really close and then back away so it's a little creepy and then we have my my other demonics that I keep sort of separate from all of these guys a lot of these have, have come from different places uh, all around um, we also have the satanic smoky from a museum a very famous museum it's funny too because these two are also very new we haven't had much time to sit with them yet but the lady that that 
<laughs> that I got them from, got them originally from Phantoms Follow, and she says they're the real deal. They're too demonic for my taste. I cannot have them in my house. Apparently, the cops got called on her and her husband for a domestic. When the cops went into the house while both of the people were outside, the cops actually came out and offered to take them into a hotel because the screaming and the wailing, they said it sounded like they had somebody in their basement tied up. Um, so these two Holy apparently, um, I'm actually very interested with these two because apparently they're very loud, they're very obnoxious. Um, and sometimes too, she said that she would hear them when they were only two in her house, she would hear somebody stopping down the hallway while she went up to go use the bathroom. And she goes, I just can't take it anymore. She goes, I need them out of my house. So she had them in her garage until I finally got a hold of them. Yeah, and then of course we have all these guys over here. Um, they're not, you know, demonics or anything. It's just, I was running out of storage space. <laughs> so they kind of chill there. We do have a new little lady who's really, really awesome. And her name is Jackie. Uh, she came, these were two paintings that she actually made. Um, apparently the poor kid's been sitting in an attic uh, for a lot, a long period of time that came from another paranormal investigator. Um, but she didn't have the time for her. She said, please keep her with her paintings. So that's exactly, we moved some stuff around kept her with her paintings and she's been wonderful. So she loves the interaction. So we're gonna start giving her more time. So Jackie's great. Um, so are all of these guys. So you shouldn't have a dull moment in here tonight. Hopefully they're they're on their best behavior and they're willing to, you know, show themselves. For a second I thought you said you shouldn't have a dull moment. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> I shouldn't use that. <laughs> I think there's a lot of doll moments in here. There's never a doll moment. <laughs> Hi, my name is Eric Holler. I am co-owner of the Convent Tattoo Studio. And this is our Gacy corner. Joel and Gacy, the infamous killer clown, killer of boys. I've got quite a few of his paintings. Um, of course, he dressed as a clown, Pogo the Clown. I've, I'm lucky enough to have two different pogos. He also had an affinity for um, Disney and um, Seven Dwarfs. This is called Hi Ho in the Mine. This is one of another one of his original oil paintings. Back here, I don't know if you can see it that well. This was a painting that he only did a couple of. I, I think that Marilyn Manson has one of these paintings. It's called Hollywood Monsters. It's not one of my favorites. I mean, my favorite Gacy of course, is, is the Pogo paintings. Those are like the crown jewel of like of true crime memorabilia. I've got some other cool stuff. Uh, I've got some um, Charles Manson, some Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, um, some original drawings and paintings from him. So let's go take a look. Cool. Lovely. I'll just follow you. Okay. This piece right here was done by Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, in 1997. It was actually a birthday present um, to me. Um, I had it for several years. I did eventually sell it, and about five years ago, it came back into my possession. And this, other than the Gacy paintings, this is one of my prized possessions right here. I mean, it's a very evil looking yes. piece of art. Yes, but, but your knife. Put your knife, evil eyes. Moving right along. This is a cool little corner of our studio right here. This has several items from Charles Manson, Richard Ramirez. Um, if you can come a little closer, these are hand, this is a hand tracing of Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. He did those, he, he passed away in 2013. He did these about a year before he passed away. I got those from him personally. Um, this is another one of my esteemed pieces, Charles Manson handprint signature these all are original pieces they're not copies they're the actual original pieces richard ramirez the night stalker again this is a, a polaroid photograph of him and sam san quentin with his then wife doreen here is a signed charles manson polaroid from the visiting room at san quentin here is a handwritten richard ramirez the night stalker letter and again these are all originals they're not copies is that the actual letterhead that he had on there? Well, he, it just depends on what people would send him. All kind of letterheads. I mean, he would he would write some letters, and it would just be notebook paper. Um, people would cool, I would send him really cool stationery, and this was just something that somebody, some stationery that somebody had sent him, and and that's why I ended up framing this. This was just a really cool piece with the pentagram. You know, of course, it was Richard Ramirez. Very ominous looking, <laughs> I have to say. Nicholas Clow, the Vampire of Paris. He's out of prison now. He's actually on Facebook. And he does custom paintings. And I get him to do 
serial killer pieces for me. This is a self-portrait of Nicholas Clow. And if you notice all these black splotches, he cuts himself on his paintings and, and splatters his paintings with blood. So that was just a little added extra that he would do for his paintings. This is a, is a real blood. Nicholas Clow, the Vampire of Paris. Um, if you want to see the, the BTK, Dennis Rader, yeah. um, here is a handwritten. Let me, let me kind of get in over here so you can see it. But this is a handwritten and a piece of artwork from Dennis Rader, the BTK killer. This is a really cool piece right here. And you can see that there's his initials, DLR, and I believe right there, Dennis Rader. Wow. All right, this hoodie right here um, belonged to a man named Cedric Ford, who was a mass killer. Um, an interesting story of this piece is when he committed his crime, his, his mass killing, you know, he, he committed well, the lady who owned his, the property where he was living got hold of me and said she had a box of his clothes that were left behind that his family and, and nobody claimed. She asked me if I was interested in his clothing, and, and yes, of course I am. And well, his, his hoodie is now a part of our studio. Just eerie seeing it on a mannequin, you know? And here he is right there. Wearing this, it. Yeah. But you're also a skeptic, I guess. Yeah, to be honest with you, I am a skeptic. I'm the odd one out here at the studio. Um, they're all believers here except me. And I'm just, honestly, I'm looking for that one true sign. That one thing that's going to happen to me where I can go, okay, yeah, you know what? I was wrong. There is a such thing. It hasn't happened yet. And, I mean, who knows? Maybe tomorrow is the big day. Maybe tonight's the big night. Hey. We'll stir it up for you. <laughs> right. Hey guys, so right now we're here in the convent tattoo shop. Obviously with the owner, Sophia, you're awesome. And today we are happy to announce the flash sheets and we're finally releasing the tattoo flash sheets that we've been talking about for about a year now. A lot of people online have been asking about when we're gonna release these. Here they are, there's gonna be a link in the description of the video. You can go download the actual files, bring them to your artist. And we're all gonna get matching tattoos, which I think is really cool. And so yeah, to start off tonight's video, we're actually gonna get one of the flash sheet tattoos, or actually I'm going to, right here on my leg. Excuse my bug bites. Ooh, down there. That's the Pine Barrens. Yeah, the Pine Barrens coming pine back Barons to haunt Barons. us. I'm gonna have you do the tattoo right here in the shop, and then we're gonna investigate. I think it's uh it's perfect. Yeah, I'm you ready, you ready I guess? That's rock. Right. That's rock your roll, man. Cool. All right. So we lost the audio on this clip for some reason, but check out the Stay Spooky Tattoo. She did such a good job. And if you want to get a matching tat with me, you can actually get that design. Okay, Jeff, okay, Papa man. Spooks, it's your first tattoo, man. It is. Are you excited? Oh, I'm, yeah, I am actually kind of excited. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, don't, I don't know this guy, but... <laughs> Keith, we trust you with our yeah, lives, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you're doing the Spooky Fam tat. The flash sheet. I am doing the spooky yeah. fam. Dance. We all are. Connor's getting one too. But it's my birthday today. So. Yeah, happy birthday, man. I have to remind you that. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, there we go. I'm ready. Oh, okay. Keith, you got any final words to him? God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Get ready. All right, okay. <laughs> Jeff's first tattoo at age 62. Kind of weird. Hey, you've wanted this for a while. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's see it, man. This? Yeah. I gotta right. be careful about smudging it. <laughs> That's gonna look badass, man. So, stop it, head down that way. You'll be fine. Head down. Look. You're gonna grab this. I'm not real good on my stomach. Okay, Papa Spooks. You ready? Yeah. No. <laughs> My actually arm is going numb though. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Hold on, let me, I need to fake it out. I'm gonna get the original cut. I know, I'm actually gonna transfer it. It's okay, buddy. Look at Connor, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but he's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> is that how that shit feels? For real? You'll get used to it in like two yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, just give it a minute. My feet are sweaty. 
<laughs> I'm gonna put this in before the tattoo shop we investigated. Before my obituary. <laughs> I wonder how you would deal with this. I think she would probably just take it. Yeah. No, I don't think she would. What are you saying about me there, buddy? <laughs> it looks spectacular. Yes. Do you ever take a break? Oh yeah, all the time, but not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see it, man. Here it is. Wow. That oh, honestly God. looks God. so good. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Makes you look no. strong. <laughs> Put him up. I need Tom Petty right here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> He's no. immediately on to number two. <laughs> I can't just have one now. <laughs> you said awesome. that. You yeah, said that, do. man. <laughs> Once you get one, you're done. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's gonna want yeah, yeah. And you're gonna have to find a video yeah, tattoo. Yeah, you no. can't back down, literally. <laughs> yeah, so what do you do to this thing after now? <laughs> okay, buddy. Connor's getting his. Are Let's you ready? Go. Are you ready, man? I'm always ready. You got the Stay Spooky planchette designed by none other than Keith himself. Mr. Hungry Fonzie. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Took that one to heart. Jeff's over there already wants a second. <laughs> 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 Oh shit, look at that thing, baby. Weren't you just saying you wanted an eye tattoo earlier too? Damn, straight off the flash. You too can get that tattoo online. Exactly. If you want to match with Connor. Wow, man, you're putting everybody through the ringer today. I know. Look at that. But everybody's doing a good job. I guess I'm the final cog. Yeah. Cog in the flash machine. Cog in the flesh machine? What? <laughs> flash. No, I was like, <laughs> the yeah. yeah, I don't know what the flash machine is. I don't know if I, I wanna. I don't know if I wanna I be around for that. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, man. We're all done. Halloween and it's Halloween June. and Mi yeah, June. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. looks Thanks good. This guy right here. Good time, buddy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Tell them where they can find you. Uh, Cardinal Tattoo, Turnersville, New Jersey, on the Black Horse Pike. Yeah. That's where you go if you want to get really good tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'll see how I feel that day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs>right now we're surrounded on both sides there's one right here and there's one over here too are you down here dude this thing's been on for like 20 minutes while we've been setting up the like door? The door sound is. I, 
Uh-oh, is everything okay? <laughs> uh, yes, but I have a question for you. Oh, okay, um, I might have an answer. We have heard the sound of, like, when you guys were, alarm. yeah, when you were opening the door, the ding, ding. Mm -hmm. We heard that twice now. Is that something that just happens in here? No, that, that doesn't go off unless the door's open. Uh, well, that's, where, what are the other doors in here? The only, uh, the only doors that you would hear that from would be the one side door that leads out to the back, um, which is locked. Uh, you need the key to open that. And then the double doors, the glass doors, and just the front door. So it's usually just the front door. Yeah, we've heard it uh, twice now, as if a door was being opened, and we got it on camera, the ding, ding. That's interesting, because normally, like, like if you go open the front door right now, just to test the theory, it should say, um, it should like have like a little, either a beep or it'll say office door open or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Have you opened the door to see what it says? Just to see if, if, it, if it's the same thing that you guys are hearing? No, I guess, I guess we'll try that out. I just wanted to make sure that no one's uh, breaking in here or something like that. No, because um, the, only, the only doors that it would censor to you are those three doors. That's it. Wow. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. And also, right when that happened, we had three different devices go off at that exact moment. So, hmm. God, freaky already. Well, I'll, I'll let you go. Comment. I'll let you go. I just wanted to make sure <laughs> just, that. Nope. I am awake. I am here. If you have any questions or you're not sure or something, just give me a call. But that's what I would do. I would, I would just, if you guys are in the front room, open the front door just to hear the sound, to see if it's the same. Because there are other dings that are from nothing that we've heard in the past that come from nothing so um if it's the same if it's the same thing all right well <laughs> i guess we'll Ooh. test it out now <laughs> <Half -life. laughs> wish us luck thank you okay bro so we none of our statics are set up none of our this is only our one cam we haven't even done the intro to the video and why i started rolling was because i heard that fucking doorbell and then it happened again it's this it's this sound i know it's this sound i've heard it today No, it wasn't that sound. But it, it was. That's it was like a door. Like, ding, ding ding, ding ding. All right. Well, we're gonna set our stuff up and actually get going now. So we've been hearing this weird bell thing. It's not this, is it? This ring. We've been hearing this weird bell dinging. And at first we thought someone had come in and out of the tattoo shop. It wasn't that, but we we're all set up here. As you saw in that last clip, this, oh, it's creepy that it's reading right there. There's something standing right here. This device and another device was, was just going off and they were both showing that somebody was standing here where we're hearing the bell from. Then that music box in the hallway went off and now this one on the stair. The stairs is going off. The vibe changed very quickly in here. It's uh, electric. I mean, when we were filming earlier, we were talking about how it really didn't seem like like anything like evil or anything like that. But I mean, Genuinely, it is freaky in here. I don't know how to explain it exactly to people online, but it's like, it feels so heavy all of a sudden. All different devices are going off in different places at different times. So it's like, there's just different energies here. And to also, I gotta state, all these devices have been set up for like 30, 20 minutes now. Yeah. And none of, none of them have been going off except one at a time. So to whoever's in here, in the convent, Tattoo shop, maybe if this is your old house, you were brought in here and you're attached to one of these items. All we wanna do is speak with you tonight. So if you can come out and talk to us, we would love that. We're not here to hurt you. Oh, that was me. We're not here to hurt you. 
We just want to have a conversation. My name's Colin. My name's Connor. And we, we'd, we'd love to talk to you tonight. We heard you love... We heard you love talking to people. If you're in here with us, can you go touch any of the little boxes that we have set up? Or you can walk over to us and we'll be able to hear where you're walking from. Medieval. Haunted. <laughs> First word. Haunted. That's what we're trying to figure out. Who this building is haunted by. Can you tell us our, your name? Oh, pressure change. Miller. Miller! Oh. I just got sinus pressure like a headache. Miller? If that's you, where are you right now? Okay, it seems like you're down there. There's two. There's one on the stairs and one over there. What are you concerned about? Maybe the new doll that just got here? They could, other spirits could be concerned. Anomaly. You're concerned about a new anomaly? Choice. So we have Joyce and Miller. If you see that thing on the stairs and you're setting it off, can you please tap it or step on the stairs when I say your name so we know who we're talking to? Is it Miller? Is it Joyce? Straight up movement downstairs. Oh, Joyce. Oh. Joyce. So it is Joyce downstairs. Joyce? You're standing here? A dog. A dog. A dog. You're an adult, Joyce? Interesting that we get. Adult. You never know if it's an adult or a child. <gasps> Miller, where are you? Can you make a noise wherever you are, Miller? Jeff. <gasps> Whoever's downstairs is down there. Maybe we should walk down there for a second. All right, we're coming downstairs. Oh, Jesus, you okay? <laughs> All right, Joyce. Are you down here? Can you tell us where you are? No, I can't. No, I can't. It's crazy. Why can't you tell us where you are? Inanus. He pushed. Oh, remember how she said the stairs for some reason in here are so active? He pushed down the stairs too. Maybe this is the spirit of a woman who is attached to one of the items. Tormentum. Goddamn AC. Tormentum? Go back upstairs. Don't 
See, this is how the music box is supposed to work. It only goes off when you stand in front of it. We want to know where we should go in this building. Can you make a noise and show us where we should go to talk to you? Are you attached to one of the dolls? Barn. Barn. Where is my body? Oh. Barn. There's farmers. Remember? They thought the Whistler who's right here was a farmer. Okay, before we move to the next area, if this is the Whistler, if you'd like to whistle, can you whistle back to us? It's interesting. You know it's back even further? Hanging skeleton from a noose. Is that where you want us to go? Even further into the shop? Let's do it. We're just setting up in this room and there's something... Oh, right there! The music box showed it! There's something standing in front of that door. That scared me. Oh, look at Music box is a dude. That music box picked something up over there. That one, the sensor did, and this music box is picking it up too. There's something standing in front of the door right now. <gasps> All right, to whoever's in here. They never found me. Where's my body? They never found me. This piece right here came from a um, a funeral home. There was Nels this guy named Nelson. He was an undertaker. That's the only information that the lady who had these pieces. She went to an auction. This was one of his pieces that he kept in his like dungeon area of the of the funeral home. Um, and apparently he was taking pieces from different women and their teeth and making art pieces. Now this was from a prostitute. This one though she believes has two women attached to it. That I, I can't be for certain, but there is an attachment definitely to this piece because it's her own human hair. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah. is, is that a tooth? Yeah, that's, that was one of her teeth. What he was doing, he was taking pieces from these women and taking their teeth. Nobody knew. The families didn't even know either. That but is she, she had the little, you know, the little snippet. Oh. We have some balls There's a tap right behind you. set up on the stairs, too. Yeah, if you see those balls on the stairs, walk over and push one of them down. We'd love to play with you. We're friendly. We just want to be friends. Can you tell us who you are? Or make a noise to let us know where you are? It gets lonely. It gets lonely here at night. You usually have people with you during the day. I feel... Oh, this tap ball's going. Look at that, on this one. Thanks for setting that off. Look, what on you? Oh, f what the fuck? Oh, that's creepy, dude. There are those little blinking balls everywhere around here. You can touch any of them to show us where you are. Dude, they've got like a hundred cat balls. Yeah, no. Like, oh, all the way at the other end. I think they're all on. It's standing right there, dude. Oh, right when I said that, it walked away. Oh, other side. It's on the green now. All right. Can you help? Can you help? Dude, I was about it to. lonely. This seems like a sad spirit. They never found my body. Where's my body? Can you help? It gets lonely. It seems like a child. It does seem like a child. Are you the spirit of a of a young kid? We were kids too once. Upstairs. This ball, since we walked in here, keeps going off on Harold. I'm really here. <laughs> Can you tell me where you are? 
Now, I was going to say, this is strange. That news, or that cat ball that keeps going off, Harold the child. Remember, in our tour, that was one of the few dolls that she pointed out and said, this doll really used to scare people. I didn't even realize my back's to the, to the demon corner. We set up some little toys on the stairs. I would really love if you could show us that you're here by pushing one of them down the stairs, running up and down the stairs. Just show us that you're here. Dude, it got so... Silex. It got so still in here, man. Like, think about over there. All of our devices, pretty much every single one went off. Oh! <laughs> but there's somebody right there. Are you right here? See those little balls? Just go touch one of them. Alright, so we have the SLS camera. What was that flash? Oh, this one just went up. Whoa, what the hell? Two of them behind me, dude. Do you see that? What the hell? I wasn't even close to them. Yo, what in the hell, dude? Two of those? Look, it wasn't me. So I've got the SLS now. This thing is able to track figures in the environment. If you're here, we should be able to see you. Once again, don't need to be afraid of us. Can you come stand in front of the doorway over there? We know that you're here with us. Remember, we'd still love to have you knock one of those balls down the stairs. Okay guys, so we're gonna do a DR60 right now. This is a voice recorder. To anybody who's in this building. Home. Home. Yeah, this, maybe it's one of the past owners or the people who lived here, like she said. If this was your home at one point, you can speak to us. We just want to hear your voice. All you have to do is just talk. Is there anybody here with us right now? Can I ask what your name is? Is there anyone we should be afraid of? Are you a child or are you a grown up? All different balls keep going off. Right when I said, Are you a child too? Are you waiting upstairs for us? We just want to know your story. Is it okay that we're here talking to you or do you want us to leave? I heard there's somebody that likes to whistle here. Can you whistle for me? Kind of like this?
institution. We just want to know your story. Are you, is it okay that we're here talking to you, or do you want us to leave? Takeaway from that is that Spirit Talker said there's a shapeshifter here. It growled at us. I'm a friend. I'm a friend. Oh, I'm getting creep vibes kind of all of a sudden. Okay, we're gonna move to another room. Do you want us to come upstairs? Or if you don't want us to come upstairs, you can roll one of those balls down the stairs and we won't come up. DR60 in that piercing room and then go upstairs. You wanna? Yeah. Okay. So we set up in the piercing room where people get pulled all the time and she said this is a darker room. This is where the shadows walk to. And this uh, music box that we set up that had been on the whole time in the other room that didn't go off is going off as if somebody followed us in here. It's pointing right towards the basement. Yeah. Can you step away from that, the hallway? You can come into the room. Oh, I just got a figure on here. Damn it, there was just a fucking figure. Now, I'm gonna turn this off. Whoever's in here, we just want to talk. Just use your voice and let us know who you are. Can you tell us your name? Where are you? What are you? Are you a human spirit or are you something else? Why do you like messing with people? It seems like there's so many of you in here, but tonight we've talked to somebody who's a little more negative and somebody who seemed to be sad. Which one are you? Or are you something different? I would really love to hear you do something for us. Can you bang on something? Do you have a problem with us being here? Who is upstairs waiting for us? Can you tell us that? Can you tell us your name? Where are you? Where are you? Are you a human spirit? Or are you something else? Sounds to me, once again, like something almost angry followed us now, and it's taken over the communication. It felt like the sad person at first. I don't feel that anymore. You look like you're getting affected. I feel weird. How so? 
I'm getting like this like sick feeling in my stomach. No. I say we go to the attic. You ready? Yep. We can end up there. Hey everybody, it's Colin here. Thank you for watching today's video. Hello to all the new subscribers and hello to the rest of our beautiful, wonderful, spooky family. As you know, every single week here on the channel, we give away a free gift bag to one lucky viewer of the show. And this week to enter the contest, all you have to do is like today's video, let's smash that like button and comment, let's get a tattoo in the comments section below. I'm gonna give you all 10 seconds to do this now. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So go comment, you can comment multiple times. It helps the video so much. And we have some really exciting collabs coming up soon. Videos with Exploring with Josh, Nick Groff from Ghost Adventures and Twin Paranormal, along with some other really, really crazy investigations, locations and evidence. But anyways, let's get back to today's video. Thank you for listening to my little spiel. I love you guys so much and stay spooky. To whoever's up here, we heard you're kind of the angrier person. I think you've been trying to come talk to us all night. Or maybe you're the child who looked burned. Can you tell us that you're here by touching one of our devices? Sit down. We really want to hear you actually make a noise or move something or push something. You have our permission to do it. Can you do it? kitchen you can come on down here we'd love to see you Are you trying to scare us? We know that you're here. It seems like you've gotten quiet. We just want to talk to you. We have a few different ways you can talk to us. You can make noises. You can touch some of these lights that we have around us. I'm only five. Okay, so you're one of the kids. We're just here to talk. Whoa, my light just died. F I think at this point we should do an Estes session. I agree. Think so? Okay, I'm gonna suit up. All right, to whoever's in here, please come and speak with us. Let's try to figure out who this is. Okay, I'm ready to talk to whoever's here. All right, can you tell me what your name is? I heard a, <gasps> like a kid. <gasps> Motion sensor going out. Dude, I feel a cool breeze all of a sudden. Where are you? The wall. Are you attached to one of these dolls? I don't know. We just want to know something about you. Can you tell us about yourself? Mike. Your name's Mike? I was burned. You were burned? A handsome boy. You were a child? Five. You're the five-year-old child? What happened to you? Why were you burned? Coffee or coffin? Ten? 
Were you cremated? Blood clot. Where are you in this building? You know. Are you up here with us? Creepy kids laugh. <laughs> that was you behind me? Mm -hmm. That's so something. We like heard that you like throwing stuff up here and making people feel uncomfortable. Um, is that true? You like messing with the people that work here? It's just fun. Throwing. I feel like there's another person up here with me right now. Can you tell me what your name is? I don't think it's just the kid. That's the man. What's the man's the name? the kid's voice. That's the man. I'm, I'm kind of creeped out. I don't know what you're feeling out there, but I'm feeling to the stairwell. Mike, can you tell me what the, the man's name is? I'm hearing noises f***ing everywhere. That's right. Run. You don't want us up here? That was a creepy voice. Run. Why don't you want us here? Only big boys. I feel like we're big boys. What's your problem with us being up here? Do you used to live up here? I'm feeling fucking sick. My house. So you did Creepy live here. voice. Fuck that. My house. Were you one of the farmers? Nope. What the f was that? Talk to me. Nope. Talk to me. I'm trying to talk to you. I need some answers though. Oh my god. Creepy voice. Bye. Like that, bro. Are that you was leaving? Creepy. You got me for for it. They got me for it. If you want us to leave, can you knock down one of those balls on the stairs? Back to the kid. I'm trying. Uh, bookshelf. Can you move something up here? Make a noise? He's so mean. The man is? Harold. Is Harold what the man's name is, Mike? I do it when he says to. Surprise! Where are you? Call me Frank. We got another person up here now? Yup. Uh, 3.15. My life was short. <clears throat> How did you die, Frank? Little kid again. Accidentally. Are you attached to one of these objects in this building Frank I think so are you happy still got things to fix you're working things out Frank <laughs> I think a woman's voice this time <laughs> is there anything you want to tell us before we leave tonight find me where are you you gotta help well, us out. Markers, X's. Ha <laughs> ha. Creepy voice again. I think from what I'm hearing, there's three distinct voices that are coming through. A child voice that I keep hearing the same one. 
some other guy who was whatever it said fixing, and then the other kind of angrier person. Is that true? Is there three people up here? Three spirits? There's a group. I know there's a lot of entities in this building. How many are upstairs right now with us? 112. That's a lot. It's are getting colder. Do you want us up here? Yes. Go to Arkansas. I don't think I'll be going to Arkansas anytime soon. Oh, a kid giggle. <laughs> Is there anything you want to tell us before we leave tonight? We're staying. Yeah? You're staying in this building. Self has made it this your home. You have to stay here. She'll take care of you guys. There's one bad thing. What's the bad thing? Oh, it was that same creepy voice. Shapeshift. Shape shift? I don't know if I'm hearing things, but shape sh Oh, it's closer. Or closest. It, do you know how to run? Like a deep male voice. Who is this speaking to us? Do it. Ah, I felt that. This all of a sudden is giving me mad chills. You're down to the last something. You need to tell us who you are. Ball. You gonna move the ball? Knock one off. No f way. No f way. Was that you? Oh, dude, I just got f***ing anxiety, bro. I feel like something just walked up. I started on my right side, and it's like hard for me to breathe. Bro. What? What? Take your headphones off. What? It knocked down two of the balls. What? Get when? I said, you said ball. I said, Knock one of those off for me. Immediately oh. after. Bro, I got f***ing anxiety just now. It just came up here. Look. Let me see. Holy shit. No, it just knocked the one down. I guess it rolled down to that one. Oh, that's trippy though that it... No what do you mean you heard two different well, battle scatters? I, I think it just it got knocked off and probably settled on the landing over That's here. It's crazy. Yo! Dude, I'm... Yo, how about you do Estes for five minutes since it's here and then we can call it. I'll film you. Wow. I know. I got... Dude, when, that's so weird. Did that just happen? Dude, you literally said ball? I know. I said, That's crazy right before the... Look, are, you, are you gonna knock one of those balls off? You can do that. Damn! And then immediately, I heard. Dude, dude, dude. Bro, that could not have been way crazier timing. This just stopped rolling too. But I think now that it's here, we need to at least try and talk to him once. I'm gonna have you do the essence. How about you sit? You need to tell us who you are. Ball. You gonna move a ball? Knock one off. No f way. No f way. It's a little freaky to be standing right here now. That's really like, you gonna move one of those balls? 
<sighs> Pause for a second. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Yo, we've been having a lot of success with the balls lately. If you guys like these ball experiments, let us know in the comments and we'll keep doing them. Okay. You're right. anxious? Go under. Okay. I want to know, first of all, if you're here, if you can come up those stairs and you did a very good job pushing that ball down. If you can push one more down, we'll get out of here. Sorry, I didn't hear that. If you push one more down, we'll get out of here and let you go to sleep. You can show us that you want us to get out. I like you. Thank you. Can I ask? I think I was just hearing your voice. Is this the little kid? It's karma. Believe me. What's karma? It's ominous. Daddy. Oh, that's a kid word. So, if this is the kid, why are you here? I think maybe the whole time we've been talking to the kid, who maybe you were the one who was saying it's lonely and everything. Were you murdered, maybe? Did someone take your life, your dad? I know that might be hard to talk about, but did No, she... I am happy for her. Yeah, I'm not really, this isn't making, it seems like a bunch of different energies are coming through right now. Who are you happy for? Who's her? Have you seen? Have I seen what? Her die. Now this seems like a more negative thing has come in here. I'm happy for her. Have you seen her die? That sounds pretty f***ing negative. Can you touch one of the red lights around me? Ooh, I have goosebumps. I feel like there's somebody touching me on my shoulder right now. Are you touching his shoulder? Oh my god, it is oh. That was a weird sound, like, oh. I, that's me. I just got hit with the most crippling anxiety all of a Who's sudden. Who's got you? Who's got me? Somebody does. Somebody that came in here has very bad energy all of a sudden. Who is it that just came in here? It changes. <laughs> yes, it does. And I don't want to. You don't want to change? You don't have to. Wow. If you guys. How it started. I feel like this is like so many more words than I'm usually hearing in this. That does make sense. That's what I was feeling too. Remember I said three different voices I was hearing? But it's like you could cut the anxiety tension in here with a knife. It's so thick. You can't get that through the screen. But I Who feel. Who are you? I feel very uncomfortable. My name's Colin. Who are you? That's Connor that you're talking to that can hear you. I gotta run? Like, it, did, it was like, oh, gotta run. Well, we're about done talking to you. I guess there's so many different people here. Can you just tell us what you have to say? Like, give me a message. What do you want to say? If you had one thing we could share with your family or we could know about you. I showed off. Yeah, you did. Yes, you did, with those balls. I would love if you could do it again, but it's okay if you can't. I mean, I heard, like, fall down. <gasps> yeah, it did fall down the stairs. That was crazy, actually. I hope that if you're the little kid, you found peace. I hope that if you're the woman who was hurt, you found peace. I hope that if you're the angry person, you calm down a little bit. But thanks for coming to talk to us. I'm going to give you one more chance to make a noise for us or tell us your name, move one of those balls, bang on a wall, run at us, do anything. It was nice. <laughs> yes, it was. There was just a ghost right here. I'm just gonna listen for a minute before we go. Just say any words you want to. I'm not gonna ask any questions. Or move something, do anything for us. You look like a boy. I am a boy. Okay, I'm just gonna let you talk. 
I want to go. It's gone to complete static. Oh, that was interesting, man. It seemed like a little kid, then a bunch of different people. I thought I was, it was like, there were so many people talking. Yeah. Like a lot of times with the spirit box, you hear a lot of like static. But this was like, I was hearing nothing but words. But yeah. like they were sweeping like so fast, it was hard to make out what any of them were saying. Yeah, that I think we can honestly say was really strange. Like, I've never heard like that many like voices doing Estes. Well, let alone the f***ing ball right yeah. after I said ball. And that proves to people online that this shit is not bullshit because I said ball before the ball, literally next to me, at the bottom of the stairs, rolled down the stairs. And I don't give a shit if you think, what, you got a fucking fishing line or we knocked the, like, it's so far away from us. There's a static camera on it. That timing was incredible. Like, I'm fucking lit that we got that on camera. Can you make one more noise before we go? Just to tell us goodbye? It's straight up like it's their bedtime right now, or they're gone. Mm -hmm. None of the devices, zero are hitting. Think about the beginning of the night. Almost every single one was going off. It made a huge paranormal event for us, rolled the ball down, but it's like it used all of its energy and it's like, it has to go. There was even earlier, you were, I was saying, can you knock one of the balls down? And you said, I'm trying. Oh, true. Like it, it finally was able to. And then you said at the end, I'm showing off. Yeah. But like even the music box, think of how much that was going off at the stairs at the mm -hmm. beginning. Silent. The REM pods, the other music boxes. It's a strange place. I know, I'm ready to get Very the Very active though. Okay, thank you to whoever was up here. Yeah, thank you for talking to us. Stay spooky. All right. At the end of the day, the convent is haunted. I just don't know by who. I couldn't tell what we were feeling that night. Neither Connor or I could tell you exactly who we were speaking with. The place is mysterious. I mean, there are so many haunted objects, haunted artifacts, cursed items that lie in that building. I couldn't tell you where the energy is coming from. And neither can the owner, Sophia, or Eric. I think that's what keeps people coming back to this place, though that there's an element of mystery, an element of surprise. And I know that if I lived in the area, I would be going to this shop for all of my tattoos in the future. And this investigation just opens more doors than it closes. It makes you wonder, if objects can be haunted, does that mean that that building's full of a thousand ghosts? I guess we'll never know. But we love you guys so much. Thank you for watching, and as always, Stay spooky.